So good morning, everybody, and welcome to the latest installment of the Apero Teaching and Learning Meeting. Today is Wednesday, September the 4th. My name is Matt Burgess. I'm from the University of Virginia, and I'll be facilitating our Jira Palooza Teaching and Learning Jira's discussion today. I'm going to go ahead and repost a link to the Etherpad. So for those of you who are just joining us, if you haven't signed in already, please sign into the Etherpad and also check out uh, that list of JIRAs that's been posted there. We may not get through all of these, but we'll try to get through as many as we can. And if you have additional JIRAs that you'd like to talk about at this or some future meeting and you don't see them there, please feel free to paste those in. We always begin our meeting by uh, discussing any announcements that we have uh, about the various projects that are going on in the Aperio community. Josh, I see that you've got some announcements here. Do you want to dive in and catch us up on a couple of these? Sure, I can do that. Uh, I want to channel Wilma just a little tiny bit. She's offline because of Hurricane Dorian today, although everything is fine and, and on the road to recovery for her. So uh, I wanted to mention three things. One is the call for proposals for the Sakai Virtual Conference is open. So it's open now through the 20th of September, and the link is in the Etherpad. So if you've got something great to share, please follow that link and submit a proposal. I also want to let people know that I'm starting conversations about the Sakai Roadmap for 2021 through 2023. So if you're interested in contributing, please get in touch with me and let me know. And the third thing is, this is just something to carry over from some of the core team conversations. We are so, so close to the feature freeze for Sakai 2020. So that's scheduled for Monday, September 16th. So less than two weeks away will be the moment at which we cut off the development of new features and begin the process of getting Sakai 2020 ready for release. That'll take a few months to do. but. Uh, September 16th is a really meaningful date for the community. So I just want to let you know that we're on track to have Sakai 2020 out in quarter one of 2020 as planned. That's great. Thanks for those announcements, Josh. I know it's an important thing for the community and for people outside the community in the general ed tech ecosphere to see us continue to release new versions of Sakai and continue to meet our general chronological goals to release those on time. I think those things are really great, uh, not only for us within the community, but for people outside of the community who are hearing things about Sakai, sometimes from us, sometimes not from us. So I think that's great. Uh, for those of you who have never been to Sakai Virtual Conference before, it's definitely something that you don't want to miss. Um, I encourage you to check out that call for proposals. Uh, this is a great conference, often geared a lot more toward pedagogy. So, you know, if there are things going on at your institutions that your instructors are excited about, things that you all are excited about that your instructors are doing, this is a great opportunity to showcase some of those and share some great use cases, some great success stories with other people throughout the Sakai community. So check out that call for proposals that's open uh, for the next couple weeks here in September. Tiffany, I see you've got a notice here from the Accessibility Working Group. Do you want to come on quickly and uh, share some details about this? Yeah, sure. Um, we've been working on uh, tasks for accessibility testing. So these are basically a list of tasks that instructors and students, uh, users in general, need to take in the system or need to do in the system. And, um, and links to help articles with the more detailed steps of how to do those. And uh, there are some tools that we're still um, in need of filling in some blanks for. Um, site info, resources, roster, lessons, and syllabus particularly. Um, and if anyone would be interested in helping out uh, on that task list, I've linked the document there so you can get an idea of um, what we're doing with that, how it looks. Um, just send me an email. Uh, let me put my email in the etherpad too. Uh, and uh, let me know and I'll add you on there. Uh, just send me you know, your email address basically. That's great. Thank you, Tiffany. And does that doc that you've posted there include just some examples uh, from some other tools, maybe some other tasks that you guys have already worked up so that people can check those out? Yes. Um, yeah. So that's that's the task list that we have so far. So there are actually a lot of tools in there that are uh, already written up and some of which have already been tested. 
Um, so there's like a, a list at the top that shows a uh, color key and um, there's some, some that have strike throughs have already been tested, um, but there are areas that are um, in sort of a different color, a purple um, that are ready for testing. And then some that are uh, in just black text have not been uh, completed for testing. You know, they're not ready for um, the accessibility tester to go through yet. Uh, so those are the tools that in particular need some love. <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Tiffany. So again, if folks are interested in helping Tiffany and helping the accessibility working group with that important task, feel free to follow that link, uh, see some examples there, and try to fill in some of those gaps. We've had a request, Tiffany, for you to put that link and your email address in the chat as well so the people who aren't looking right at the etherpad can see that. Sounds good. I will do that in a sec. And one final note about Sakai Virtual Conference in the chat. Josh has posted here a reminder that those virtual conference sessions are 35 minutes, uh, so a little shorter than some open aperio sessions, a little shorter than some other standard conference sessions. And because it's a virtual conference, it's all through Zoom from your desk, so everything can be short and sweet without a need to travel. So, you know, no need to wrangle travel funds for many bosses or uh, any higher ups. You can do things right from your desk and be involved right there. So, again, please consider that um, if you guys are interested. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to Josh or reach out to Wilma, um, who is the regular wrangler for a virtual conference. Any other announcements before we dive in here? Just a quick update on testing that Josh has posted in the chat. Um, that their accessibility tester uh, has tested several key tools and continues to move forward. Uh, some accessibility JIRAs have been raised and resolved, so testing is moving forward well. And they expect to have a VPAT for Sakai 2019 authored this fall and before progressing on to Sakai 2020 testing and VPAT authoring. So that's a great update as well. Obviously accessibility, uh, very important for all of us at all of our institutions, regardless of size or shape. Uh, I know that Tiffany was just mentioning to us and our team that she had an exchange with somebody about some accessibility issues with another tool outside of Sakai that some folks are using here at UVA just this morning. So this is definitely an important issue for all of us. And so it's great to see that we're moving forward with that as well. Any other announcements on the mic or in the chat before we dive into our regular Jirapalooza discussion here? Okay, seeing none, we're going to go through our list here in the etherpad, uh, starting with a couple of JIRAs that are listed here together, and I'll post a link to the first of those JIRAs here in the chat. Uh, these are SAC 33089 and SAC 42415. Uh, both of these apparently relate to separate weighting for individual gradebook items within a weighted category, which is something that I know uh, was a feature in gradebook two um, that some uh, instructors at various institutions who use Gradebook 2 have been clamoring for. I know Laura Sierra and I have had some discussions about this and she shared some horror stories about it. So I know uh, Laura Sierra and Laura Geckler are both with us today. Um, so Laura G or Laura C, do you all want to share some more background about this one? Uh, those of us who've been, this is Laura G here, uh, those of us who've been most vocal on these um, on the, on this particular feature in the past, or or actually more most recently, um, I'd like to give way for people who haven't sounded off to um, to express their thoughts. So the first people who are off the table are me and Tiffany, <laughs> because we've talked about this a lot, but. Um, We've uh, we haven't heard very much from uh, Laura Sierra and Charles Bristow. You have you have talked about this in the past. I believe your school was a gradebook two school as well. So um, chime in on your institution's use cases for 
allowing weighted items within a weighted category of the grade book and how you might see that working. So yes, Laura, you are correct. We were a grade book two institution. Um, and this is something that we've been looking for, um, at least particularly to allow the equally weighted items. I think that was the one thing that was probably used more than just than doing specific weights, but I'm sure we had some people doing that as well. Um, well, talk to us about equally weighted items. I don't understand that use case at all, and I know that um, I believe it was uh, Wilma expressed uh, <coughs> thought that they should each have their own their own Jira. So, the equally weighted one. I'm, I'll look up that number while you tell us about it. So, one example I can think of is I know I had an instructor who would have a category of quizzes. But the quizzes wouldn't all necessarily have the same exact point value. So one might be 15 points, one might, and she would have weird numbers on them. So one might be 15 points, one might be 17 points, one might be 12 points, but she still wanted them to be weighted equally within the category. And she was using weighted categories. Um, so that was the, the, um, That's the, the one use, use case that I can think of that comes to mind. OK. And Laura Sears mentioned in the chat that they've had a couple use cases similar to this. I think the one use case that I can think of, Laura G, off the top of my head that we have seen occasionally here at UVA is that we have some instructors who, for example, create you know a whole bunch of kind of basic quizzes in tests and quizzes. And those quizzes occasionally will have a different number of questions in them. They might have a different point value in total for each of those quizzes, but they then, you know, kind of want all of them to be included in the same category and worth the same amount. And we have seen that occasionally here as well. Exactly. Okay, I am adding those comments to the SAK 42414, um, which you're welcome to vote for or to watch. And it has a label TL. Um, if anybody else wants to comment, I'll go ahead and take the TL label off and put TL reviewed. reviewed. Um, we do see this as a needed feature. And there is an attached mock-up. It might harken back to some of the things um, we posted back in August, because um, I think I was addressing Wilma's question about the equal weighting for different point values back in August as well. So I mean, this has just gone on for a long time. So it's kind of hard to condense it <laughs> at this point because it's probably a two-year conversation. But another use case we had locally um, was the instructor is using um, quizzes from a publisher's site, which has different, these quizzes have different point values and they're gathering the student scores out of that and putting them into a category, wanting them all to be equally weighted in the category. So it's not always that the instructor themselves control what this quiz value is, which seems to me like that would be an easy answer. It's like, well, then make all your quizzes the same value. But sometimes this content is coming from other sites. So the quiz scoring is already determined by an outside source. They just want to put it in the grade book with an equal weighting. Sure. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, obviously, you know, when you're bringing scores from an outside tool into the gradebook, whether that tool is a tool within Sakai like Samago or, you know, external tools like MH Campus or whatever, you want that process to be easier rather than harder. And we have occasionally, you know, worked with folks who have found that to be harder. Um, and we want to make that as easy as possible. So I can see a lot of value there, definitely. Thanks, Laura G, for entering all these thoughts and comments. And Laura's 
uh, recommendation is exactly right to go and continue the conversation on those JIRAs, vote them up. Um, if you believe that those need to be pursued, if those are important priorities for your institutions, you know, that's a great way to surface those JIRAs to the core team, to other developers who are working in Sakai and let them know that these are important features that need to be prioritized. So please go there, uh, enter any additional comments that you have if you have them, and vote for those JIRAs, uh, show that they have a priority for you and your institutions. Do we have any comments on the second one, 42415, just briefly? I think one of the use cases for this one that is identical is the um, a third party tool that you can't control the points from, but perhaps you want to control the weights. And I posted the link to that JIRA in the chat as well. Uh, this is something that we have had occasional requests for here at UVA, but possibly because we were never a Gradebook 2 school, we have not seen a significant volume of requests for this, at least not in the time that I've been here uh, in the last few years. So Charles, other folks who are using Gradebook 2, I'm interested to hear what you all think about this. So uh, one use case for this is um, if an instructor um, likes to um, grade everything to 100 points, but they've got a category of whatever assignments or, or homeworks um, where they want these assignments to the in total to to figure in as say 40 percent of the grade, but they want to assign separate weights to those items. So maybe one is worth more than the other within that category. And there's no way to do that now without assigning different point values. But they like to grade everything to 100. Um, so they can't set it up quite the way they want to. They have to split them into separate categories where they might not, ideally, they don't actually want to do that. Hopefully that made sense. Made sense. I've got it in the notes. Thank you. I think we have enough to move on to another JIRA. Thank you for your time. All right, I'm going to post a link to our next JIRA here in the chat. Uh, this is SAC 42046, um, which is an overview page uh, for gradebook items. Charles, I hear you chuckling, and I know your name is next to this one on the Etherpad along with Tiffany. Do you have some comments for this one? So we kind of talked about this a little bit at the last TNL meeting, and we, we kind of talked, we talked about punting it over to the UX group. Um, which we did, but unfortunately that day it was just Sean and I. And so we had a bit of a discussion about it, but it was kind of hard to reach a consensus with just two people. Um, so, um, and, and it was kind of a sense of, well, should it just be added on to the uh, current item order or should it be a separate tab? I think was kind of where we left it the last time, if I recall correctly. My brain is kind of muddled, but um, so I'm not sure if that adds a whole lot to what we talked about before. This um, is a tough one, isn't it, Charles? Because we want to make sure that wherever we add it in, it makes sense and it wasn't just a patch job. Yes. It feels unintentional and, well, I don't know, where can we put it? Ah, let's put it here. You know, it really needs to be something we can think about and talk through and figure out. Where is it that a user would look for this information mm -hmm. um, that isn't just repurposing an existing button because that's all we could do for now? Right. And, yeah. and, and that was part of what Sean and I kind of talked about a little bit, but, but there hasn't been anything in so much in the Switch project to, to kind of look at some of these overall um, kind of navigational issues of, okay, what's the best way to go forward with things like this, not just in this tool, but in other tools as well. Should it be another tab? Um, is that the best paradigm to, to use going forward? I don't mean well, to put him on the spot. Oh, I'm sorry, Tiffany. Why don't you go ahead? Go ahead. Well, I, I feel very strongly that it should not be part of item order. There were some mock-ups that I think Sam put in the um, JIRA there. 
where they were on the, the little summary things, which were points, were added, kind of tacked on the item order. And I don't think that's intuitive, and I don't think it makes sense there. Um, I think it should be its own separate screen, kind of like how Gradebook uh, Classic and I guess Gradebook 2 had it on its own screen. Um, I liked, uh, is it Dayton's implementation where they have it as a, um, a modal window? Um, I thought that was a good way of doing it. Yeah, I was just going to say, I didn't want to put him on the spot, but I see David Bowers, or sorry, David uh, is on the, well, I guess I was looking for David Bauer. Um, I was going to ask if um, we did have a U Dayton person on the call that could talk about how they've done it, because they've done a lot of clever little UI fixes along the way, but um, I guess we have the screenshot here, so that's that's very helpful. Yeah, a modal window is good. Yeah, we have some comments here uh, that David Bauer left uh, last month where he mentions that they did create a modal window here, although it looks like, uh, according to his comments, it's not something that would be easy for them to contribute back without some modification. And so David's comments uh, did not indicate that they had the capacity at this time to contribute this back for Sakai 20. Um, so he's got a screenshot there of the modal window in Dayton's instance, and he also has a screenshot of where that button is placed, um, which is right next to the all sections groups drop down. So near the top right portion of the gradebook screen there. And so you can see those screenshots there in the JIRA if you visit that JIRA SAC 42046. Josh, can I ask a question of you since you're here from Longsite? So um, ISU had, had put in a request to get this implemented. And um, at the time, Sam thought that for the number of hours that we, we had kind of committed to this, that they could do they could do the fix for the putting it as part of the item order. And I kind of agree that maybe that's not the best place that, that we should go on and, and, and look at doing it as a, a separate, either a separate modal or a tab. My question to Longsight would be, could they take, if Dayton allowed it, and obviously we'd have to check with him, if Dayton allowed it, could um, Longsight take Dayton's work and kind of finish it up um, for um, some estimate that would be less than if Longsight did all the work themselves. Uh, wow, that's a that's a good question. I don't have an answer to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, the, the challenge is in some cases, you know, retrofitting already done work actually takes longer. Uh, uh -huh. you, would, you would think that it wouldn't, and in a lot of cases it doesn't, but sometimes it does. So I would be glad to take that question back and uh, and get an answer to that. If you'd like, sure. So, Charles, let me let's let's you and I confer offline, so I make sure that I have all the context because uh, I'm I'm missing some right now, and I want to make sure that I ask the right question when I confer. Okay. And Josh, when you take that back, be sure to take our regards and our sympathy to Adrian because Laura is posting those in the chat, and she's quite right because we're constantly asking for more things. So give our apologies to Adrian when you do. He that. loves grade book changes. Yeah, the, the, the grade book is really what makes his heart sing. I have to tell you, it does, it does. there's a song. It might be the blues, but there is a song. There. It might be. Um, the, the one thing I will tell you is that uh, Adrian's heads down on the grading service now, so. Uh, any like new significant stuff we're trying to push off until after the code freeze, just you know, by way of setting expectations. Fair enough. So I think in answer to Laura G's earlier question in the chat about the thought to get this in before the code freeze for 20, I think at this point the answer to that question is unfortunately no, given where we are in terms of mapping out our desired strategy and where the developers are in their other work. I, I think it's really unlikely. I mean, I would I would hate to say no absolutely definitively, but I think our expectation ought to be that it probably won't get in. And I think that seems like a reasonable expectation, Josh. So I think it's always good to be optimistic, but to keep our expectations reasonable. I will say that our faculty have been at least pleased that when they click on the view columns button, they can see all of the items very easily in in the grade book. That for now seems to be 
working out for them. They don't necessarily need to see all the points, um, just so long as they can recognize that everything is listed in the gradebook. They've been relatively happy with that solution. So at least we have something we can show them for now. I think that's a great point. Thank you, Laura C. Any other questions or comments about this before we move on to the next year in our list? I see that Laura G is typing. I'll give her just a second to finish her thought. And Laura comments in the chat that she's changing the TL label to TL reviewed as we talk about them. Thank you, Laura G. That is very helpful so that folks can see what we've looked at and what we have yet to review. That's right, process and all that. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> So I'm going to post a link to the next JIRA on our list. Uh, this is SAC 42019, uh, a feature request to convert uh, the Samago settings accordion list to tabs. Uh, this was a JIRA that was originally created by David Bauer from Dayton. Uh, I'm not sure if this is something that they are already using in their instance of Sakai at Dayton, although it looks like it is uh, based on a screenshot that's included here. Uh, in this JIRA. If you follow the JIRA there and then look at the screenshot posted in the description, it looks like uh, Dayton is currently using a tabbed layout to display all of those Samago settings instead of the accordion. Yes, I know we've got a bunch of folks uh, who are Samago empresses. Uh, Laura C and Tiffany are both on the call, which is great. Um, what do you guys feel about this feature? Is this something that you feel is going in the right direction, something that we want to implement throughout Sakai? Just, just to jump in quickly again, this was something that kind of was punted to the UX group. And, and since it was just Sean and I, we didn't really, um, it kind of goes back to the same thing with the, the previous gradebook discussion about accordions versus tabs. Um, I think, now I'm trying to think. I think someone said that they were going to try and do some actual usability tests. Maybe it was um, Jolie? Looks like um, Jolie did make a comment or was mentioned in Sean's latest comment that she right. was willing to conduct some, Charles. Yeah. So, yeah, some usability testing on tabs versus accordions. Um, I think more even just in, in a general sense, but... Um, what what the best path forward is again since you know we had limited attendance we didn't really um kind of come to an agreement on anything but um it was it was sort of a table it and and see how that goes um to figure out what the best way forward would be and laura c is commenting in the chat that charles is very subtly trying to point out that more of us need to be on that UX call, which normally <laughs> immediately follows this call, and I think that's an excellent, very subtle suggestion. Um, that that actually wasn't my intent, but but we can play it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, we're going to give Charles and Sean Foster tremendous power, and they're going to just start doing things by two nothing votes that change the face of Sakai forever, which will probably be very good, uh, but might <laughs> give them quite a power trip. So we might want to avoid that. <laughs> like when everyone is asked to volunteer and everyone steps back, but you're left standing there, and you're like, well, I guess I'm the one. Um, <laughs> To comment, though, about the, the UX of Dayton's solution, I saw this when Paul was showing some of the other stuff that they did there, and I was really excited about it. And I think what's cool about it is that users see all of the different sections without having to scroll. Even with the sections closed on the Samago settings screen, you still have to scroll down to find some of them. So what's cool about you Dayton's horizontal um, tabs is that you see them all in one place and you don't have to scroll down to find them. So I think that's what's clever about the way they do it. And plus many tools have a horizontal tab um, navigation across the top of them, whether you're going to add a new assignment or uh, looking at turned in assignments or permissions and other tabs, they all, they're all starting to all be horizontal. So this kind of fits in with uh, the way that other tools are designed in Sakai. 
I definitely agree with all of that. I don't know if this is the case in every instance of Sakai, but certainly in our instance, when you access this settings page for the first time, the accordion for availability and submissions is open by default. And so you definitely have to scroll to see you know, some of the other important uh, settings groups, especially grading and feedback. And my guess, my instinct is that that contributes to some of the questions that we get from instructors later on down the line, in particular about grading settings and sending things to the grade book because they never see those settings because they don't scroll down that far. Um, so I definitely agree that you know presenting these categories, surfacing those to the instructor right away helps to remind them, okay, these are the various things that are involved here. These are the various things that I have to do before I publish this assessment. So I really like that layout, agreed. Yeah, um, I also like the layout. I do um, also agree with some of the comments that um, that Sean, I think it was Sean put in, the, um, in that JIRA from the UX group um, about, tabs not usually being on a particular element of a tool but being at the top of the tool itself um, so maybe tabs aren't the way to present this um, maybe having uh, buttons at the top with those arrows or some slightly different way of organizing it but i do like this horizontal layout and i personally kind of liked the little arrows um, that sort of worked you through the process. But I did feel like the um, publish button should be at the bottom of every page instead of uh, tacked on at the end there on its own page. Um, but I, I generally like this, um, this layout. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think that that was kind of one thing that Sean and I did agree on um, was that there should be a kind of the, the save and exit cancel and save and publish um, options available on any of the tabs. And Adam has posted a plus one for that in the chat. I think I would definitely agree that obviously those are the most important functions and you know the natural next step once you've reviewed all your settings, whatever categories you need to review. And so I agree that it'd be great to have those options present on every page to make sure that yeah. they're easily surfaced. And, and that the, the published tab wasn't really necessary, that just having the button on, on any of the tabs would would make that irrelevant basically and then it just goes to the the current published confirmation page that that we already have well now tiffany can correct me on this one because i am not maybe not as familiar with it um anymore but when you click publish there might then have to be a modal window um where you could um enter some text um for the notification process when you publish a test you can send a notification to students and i think you can you can change that text too can't you tiffany or yes. does it just have, yeah so they'll, they'll have yep. to be a modal window if we put those buttons on every page and we don't have no. its own place we'll have to have no. some sort of modal window for that no it 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 takes you to another page for that okay. publish process and that there may be a, a particular need for that i don't know david uh hutchins my colleague who's on the call can um, maybe speak to that better because he's a developer on Samgo. Uh, but um, that takes you to a separate page and there are actually several aspects of that page depending what tools you have in the site. So if you have the calendar in the site, there's a checkbox uh, on the published confirmation mm -hmm. page that uh, allows you to send it to the calendar. Uh, it's checked by default, you can uncheck it. Uh, and then, or the due date rather, is what's sent to the calendar. And then the um, the email notification to students, which you can, if you do send it, type in that box and add some text in there. Um, but the, the thing that's automatically sent to them is the um, available and due date for the quiz and whether or not it has feedback available. All right, any other thoughts or comments? For Sorry, my microphone was turned off there. Can you hear oh. me now? 
Now we can hear you, David. Go ahead. Good. I was talking at nothing. No, I was actually just trying to say that um, I was over in my other window coding on another Samago problem, and I heard Tiffany mention my name. I'm not sure which one we're on right now. <laughs> That is all right. I will post a link to it in the chat for you, David. It's SAC42019, um, which is a JIRA request to convert the um, settings accordions, the accordions that pop up on that settings page in Samago, to a tabbed interface instead. All right. Let me bring up this JIRA here. I'm assuming there's some screenshots or some mock ups in the JIRA. Yeah, there's some mock-ups here um, that University of Dayton posted because they already have a kind of version of this tab layout running in their instance. Yeah, this is their production uh, instance, um, an iteration of their production instance is shown here. Oh, that's worlds lock. better. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we all thought that way. Yeah. Tiffany, did you have some specific things that you wanted David to chime in on here? Um, well, we were talking about the publish button being on its own page um, and how we would prefer it to be on every page, just like it is right now uh, at the bottom of the page. Um, but the question was uh, that Laura brought up was to put the publish um, uh, confirmation screen as a modal window in lieu of having it go off to a separate page like it currently does. And I didn't know if that was technically um, would be technically complicated to make it a modal um, and also for accessibility reasons. I'm not sure if that would be technically complicated to make it a modal that gains focus uh, when you click the publish, save settings and publish. But. Right, right. Um, it could be. I, I haven't looked in that part of the code in a while. It is entirely possible that that's a whole nother effectively screen in in samago so it could be difficult but i've done that sort of thing like i with our uh time timer submission stuff i have the modal that pops up for confirmation instead of the confirmation page so i don't think it would be terribly difficult but that's kind of a separate issue whether that's a modal or a, a separate page right from from this particular jira as far as switching to a tabbed layout yeah, I mean, I think that this tab layout is good. Um, I also agree with Sean's point that we maybe don't want tabs uh, for these things um, underneath the, the main tabs for the site. So I think, you know, maybe they could be made buttons, uh, you know, about this assessment, availability, and submissions, and so on. Uh, if, if tabs are uh, not considered uh, appropriate for that purpose. Let me take a look at the... Um, now I'm curious how the score screens look. If we have tabs on a score screen, I can't recall if it's yes. a tab or a link or what. Or because uh, hmm. if we if we match the behavior of the score screen, I think that would be fine for consistency. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> You know, my feeling on it's kind of the other way around. I think the tabs are absolutely appropriate on the settings screen, but I don't like the way they're used in Samago on the very top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do so have like, you know, If I'm in the settings of quizzes here, like at the, there's tabs at the top for like add assessments, assessment types, right. but I don't see like the selected tab for settings. So th these aren't tabs of the pages I was on. So I'd expect if I see tabs at the top, I could click question pools, and then there would be a tab for settings to go back to where I was. But mm. it doesn't work that way. Yeah, that's because the yeah. settings is for a specific quiz, not settings for right. the tool in general. Right, and that's yeah, kind of I a mean, drill. You know, once you've drilled down that far, I kind of feel like that top row of tabs should just be gone until you're out of settings and back to the main page of that section you're in being, being assessments. Uh, that makes sense to me. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think it's fine to have tabs because I'm looking at total scores right now, and I can drop in a screenshot of that um, to the uh, the Jira if that's helpful. Um, and our total scores, submission status, and so on are also tabs. And yep. so I think mirroring that behavior on the setting screen would be just fine. And I think I, that makes I agree. sense. Agree. Yeah, I think so that's I say, great. 
I say go with this year. <laughs> I like it except for that one button thing. Tiffany, if you do want to drop a screenshot and a comment in there, I think that would be helpful. So if you don't mm -hmm. mind doing that, that would be great. Yep, I am in the process of taking that screenshot and doing that. All right, thanks everybody. And thanks David for giving us some developer perspective there. I think that was really helpful. So I'm gonna post links to the next two JIRAs, uh, which are interrelated as they both have to do with gradebook real estate issues. So I'm gonna post both of those here together. So these are SAC 33439, uh, which is a request to keep hidden columns in the spreadsheet style view hidden uh, after a session ends or begins. So to make that preference sticky um, and SAC 41586 uh, to create a kind of full screen mode um, for the workspace area in that spreadsheet style view. So I see that for the first of these JIRAs, SAC 33439, it looks like Adrian has done some work on this one. And I see a comment here from Josh last month uh, that Adrian had been out of the office, but had been working on this one. So Josh, do you have any thoughts or updates that you want to share here with this one? Uh, not more than what I've already shared. I mean, so he was out of the office, he's back in the office, uh, and I just got notification yesterday that he had finished the work and was submitting a PR. So he appears to have done that. So that'll be looked at at next week's core team. That's awesome, thank you, Josh. Laura Sierra, I see that you are the founding mother behind this JIRA. Do you have any other comments that you wanna make here? Um, not really, I mean, I think uh, the point that we have several columns that um, contain information on students, um, especially now locally here. We have student name and that ID in one column. We have the section that they're, the roster that they're signed up under in one column. We have, we're getting um, what that other column is, but there's like four columns that relate to the student. Three of them are specifically their ID information. And again, the spoiled people from gradebook two days we were able to select what of those identifying columns um, would be displayed in the spreadsheet view, which of course um, frees up real estate because again, the horizontal real estate in, in the grade book is, is um, really, really important. And, um, and the, the, there's, a, there's a, it is no longer a slider, but there used to be um, a vertical bar, kind of like in most spreadsheets you use, where you could grab hold of the bar with your cursor and move it to the left, um, making the real estate of the actual grade items a little larger. So what we're trying to do in lieu of having that is be able to hide some of those student identifying columns. It's also helpful if TAs are going to be grading anonymously, where they're entering grades for students and the only identifier they have for the student is their student number which in our case is a, I think, eight digit 900 sort of number. Um, that way they could hide the student's identification information and simply use this anonymous number to enter grades um, anonymous, anonymously. So, I mean, I think we all understand, you know, how valuable it would be to be able to hide some of the student ID information. So that's, that's the importance behind this particular JIRA. Thanks, Laura. I'll take over from there because there's another um, piece of this that um, I've been going back and forth with, and this is um, partly because um, Notre Dame is is um, looking at funding this, and so um, Josh is communicating with us about the way that this might be done, and we had some questions at first, but I think that the developers have come up with a pretty good compromise. So <clears throat> in, uh, in non-developer speak, this is what's going to go on. An instructor uh, logs in, they have enough um, user information columns that it takes up half of their grade book. At Notre Dame, we've seen 30 to 50 grade book items, I kid you not, 16 weeks, just but that many grade book items. So the instructor chooses to hide those student identifier columns with the exception perhaps of one of them. and. Um, and then uh, they go off and they do something else or they uh, leave the university and they go home to their home office and they log in again and we want their columns that they hid from themselves to persist. Well, um, 
of course, that often means adding another database column, more database stuff, uh, but they figured out how to use an existing column to just um, record what the user's settings were. And then um, if the user is logging in on the same browser, have the browser store that, that information and just have the code on the server side um, discover the date of that um, of that browser setting. And if the date of the browser setting, date, time, stamp, whatever, matches um, is, is uh, let's see, same or more recent than what's stored in the database, just do what the browser says. Um, and so hopefully, and if you don't do what the browser says, you're using the information that was stored about the hidden columns to refresh. And we absolutely need this because I don't know if your support people do this, but often the answer to fixing something in Sakai is to have people, what? Empty their browser cache, right? Uh, clear, <laughs> clear their browser history. It's like, yeah, it's like turn it off again and turn it back on or clear your browser history. So. Um, so this was the implementation um, choice that uh, Adrian has been working on. Does anybody see any like terrible downside to this? Because I don't. No, I, I like the idea of having the um, settings saved. In fact, in Gradebook Classic, when you hid things and came back to that page, uh, they stayed hidden on the, on the Gradebook Classic uh, all grade screen. Yeah, I think I can see, you know, a lot of great use cases for this. I mean, in addition to the use cases that Laura C and Laura G mentioned, I see that, you know, there's a screenshot here in the JIRA SAC 33439 that mentions category average columns as another um, occupier of that valuable screen real estate. As we have been working with instructors who are transitioning from Gradebook Classic to Gradebook NG, you know, we've often seen some frustration or just some confusion among instructors, you know, who see, especially if the category only has one item in it, two categories with identical scores. Um, and so that is definitely something that could easily be hidden. And if it could be easily hidden, would easily recapture some important screen real estate um, for folks. So I can definitely see a lot of good use cases for all of this stuff. And Plus I don't know if all any... around. Go ahead, Tiffany. Yeah. I don't know if any of the code can be used from the Gradebook Classic All Grade screen. It may be too ancient, but the things definitely stayed hidden there because I've logged in uh, as users uh, once in a while when I was helping someone and went, hey, where's that item? And well, it's there, it's just hidden. <laughs> and the second of these gradebook screen real estate JIRAs was SAC 41586, um, a proposal for a full screen mode. Uh, John Buckingham, I see see that you're on the call and I also see that you were the original reporter for this JIRA. I don't want to put you on the spot if you're not ready, but if you want to just give us a brief overview or description of the use cases that you guys have seen for this at Pepperdine, that would be great. Yeah, um, hopefully you all can hear me. Um, yeah, you sound great, John. Go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. So um, one of the things, you know, that we've heard, you know, the most often, uh, specifically from, from uh, those users who were using Gradebook Classic and now um, are, you know, been kind of kind of forced into using Gradebook NG um, in our in our recent transition to Sakai 19. Um, we've been hearing a lot of complaints about scrolling, scrolling because they have a lot of students, uh, so lots of rows. Scrolling because they have a lot of Gradebook items. Um, so, you know, this is actually kind of one of the proposals that I came up with just in light of the fact that, you know, there has just been lots of scrolling in it and it really is kind of a limited space. You have this very, very limited window where you can view all of these, all of these grade book items and all of the students themselves. And so, you know, it really just kind of sometimes I think I, you know, I, you know, I, I, I see how a lot of people do want to use uh, and export their items to Excel. And I think that one of the reasons, you know, at least that I hear most often is that it gives them kind of the bigger picture view 
Um, and so I, I, I just, based upon all of the feedback that I've gotten from instructors, I, I really think it would be helpful to have kind of a, a larger screen view, a, a, a kind of a, a more immersive gradebook experience where you could go in, uh, you have your limited kind of view right now, there'd be a button to click, something like that, um, that would blow up into a larger kind of view. And then that way, um, people aren't, you know, the idea is, is that they're not going to feel as claustrophobic in that in that smaller amount of space. It's going to give them uh, a, a better idea of the bigger picture. They're going to be able to see uh, far more items. They're going to be able to see far more students. Um, and so that's really, you know, the, the the spirit of this of this request. Thanks, John. I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, I'm scrolling through um, some of the comments that you and that Alan have placed here. And something that really sticks with me is a comment that Alan made that, you know, when you're comparing what you see in the NG view to the classic view, in some ways, faculty are losing more than 60% of the students that they saw on screen in that classic view. And that is definitely a, a much less big picture kind of view. And so I, I think I can see, you know, a, a lot of potential value here. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, you know, I mean, one of the things that I've, you know, I've heard is, oh, well, they can just, you know, export it to uh, Excel. But part of, you know, at least what I want to keep them doing is keep them in Sakai, um, if I can. I mean, there's always going to be those those folks who prefer working in Excel, and I and I and I respect that, and I honor that. But I want to I want to see if you know. Hopefully, part of this too is to want to keep them in the world of Sakai um, and having them um, use less um, less outside tools, if possible. And again, I can't I can't completely control that. I grant that, but you know, if I can help keep them in the Sakai world, I think that also makes sense. And I also think it makes sense to, to even have um, these, uh, this other JIRA that I, that we just talked about, um, keep keeping hidden columns in Gradebook NG. I think that would be a great feature um, in conjunction to this request. Um, whenever, whenever I'm using, um, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheets or whenever I'm in uh, Google Sheets, oftentimes, absolutely, I go in and I want to hide sheets too, and I expect them to persist. And so I think that even in a full screen mode, I think that that, that request definitely still has value. Absolutely. And I completely agree that I think there are good pedagogical reasons to keep people, you know, working with the native tools in Sakai when possible. I think there are good technological reasons for doing that. So I think that's a great strategy. And, and I personally support that 100%. I think that makes great sense. I appreciate and, this, uh, this JIRA. So I voted for it as well. Um, but this is another case of where I've, I've had the work around with faculty where I just have them use the view columns button, hide everything but the one column that they want to work in. And then they only see the one grade column and that frees up some space and it's a little easier to work with. Most of them appreciate um, that view columns button, but having this extra really purposeful, intentional um, UI would be a really nice addition. So thank you for this, Jira. And, and I have to say that I think this would be, a, I, I did put that comment in the JIRA, but I think this would be really helpful for accessibility, especially someone who's using high Zoom. Uh, or, or even a Zoom amplifier like Zoom text, um, because you know, being able to pull out of a frame and get away from all of that scrolling uh, really helps, especially if you're trying to zoom in and, and see text bigger. Um, and it's a more common paradigm nowadays to, to break out of frames and look at a particular page full screen. Yeah, and I, you know, and I also want to help, you know, faculty from not having to keep hiding columns, you know, and I mean, again, I, I grant that hiding columns is, is, is a great feature to have. It should absolutely stay. And I, I, I love, again, this other, I, this other idea of keeping them hidden even after they've, they've logged back in. But, you know, if you have to, if an instructor just has to kind of keep hiding columns as they move forward, because they, they're just trying to get, you know, more, more workspace out of it, it just creates a lot more, a lot more process, a lot more, you know, hiding, unhiding, hiding, unhiding. And that's another thing I really, that's another burden I kind of want to help alleviate uh, on, on the part of the faculty. Totally agreed. Yeah, totally agreed. Yeah, and I think we're seeing some good work on that front in the Sakai community. And I think that's going to continue 
where we're trying to continue to add features and add functionality without adding additional process. And so I think that's a great thing to keep in mind, you know, as we think about these tools, as we think about redesigning and redeveloping new tools, you know, how can we add features? How can we add functionality? How can we improve functionality without adding process? Yeah. We have a comment from Aaron here in the chat. Uh, speaking of Zoom uh, in Gradebook, uh, depending on the browser, the Gradebook will either show blank um, when the faculty member scrolls or will gray out all items. Uh, we've seen this at Providence uh, in some browsers uh, like Firefox and Edge. Uh, yes, Aaron, we've seen uh, some behavior kind of like that as well uh, here at UVA. You know, we tend to typically recommend that faculty use Chrome uh, for that reason, especially if they have a significant number of students or a significant number of gradebook items. Um, I know Chrome tends to work better for us. I don't know if it works better for everybody, but I know Chrome tends to work better for us. So that's a great point as well. Thank you. Well, we are right at the end of our time today. Uh, thank you, everybody, for taking some time to start working through uh, this great JIRA list. I know we didn't get to everything that's on the list. That just means that we're going to have to have another JIRA Palooza very soon to dive back into these um, and discuss more of these teaching and learning related items uh, that we have here under discussion in the community. Um, remember uh, Laura's recommendations from the beginning of the meeting. Uh, please, if you have comments, if you have thoughts, um, about the JIRAs that we discussed, about the JIRAs that we have not yet discussed. Uh, please feel free to visit those, uh, leave those comments, vote for the JIRAs uh, that are priorities for you all, um, because those will surface um, for the core team, for the developers working in the community, that these are the priorities for the educational institutions that are driving us, um, which is really important. You know, as Laura points out in the chat, developers really, really benefit from functional users' input. And uh, I think almost all developers, including David Hutchins, who's with us today, would agree uh, that functional users occasionally can uh, give some good input and some good benefits. So uh, please feel free. Uh, to leave those comments, to vote for those JIRAs that are important to you. Uh, just a quick note about our upcoming meetings. Uh, so two weeks from today on September the 18th, uh, Wilma is gonna be back from her hurricane duty and she's gonna be uh, presenting an update uh, on the progress for the grading UI. Um, on October the 2nd, uh, Tiffany Stoll and John Buckingham are going to demo a prototype of the auto groups uh, feature that they uh, spoke to us about uh, in a previous meeting earlier this year um, when that was in a proposal stage. So we've now moved to the prototype stage and Tiffany and John are going to show us a prototype of that feature. And then on October the 16th, uh, Wilma and Josh and Alan Regan um, are going to give us another presentation on uh, envisioning leadership uh, in cloud storage integration, how we can move forward uh, in leadership as we think about you know, new ways to integrate uh, with cloud storage options. So those are our next three meetings. Um, remember that our first meeting in November will be canceled as it normally is in conjunction with Sakai Virtual Conference. Um, so we will have uh, one more meeting in September, two meetings in October, and then one meeting in November. And as always, if you have uh, thoughts about upcoming meeting topics as we move uh, into mid-November and December and the end of the calendar year, where did the time go? Uh, please feel free to send those uh, by email to myself or to Tricia or to Wilma. And one final comment uh, from Laura G, uh, a link to a JIRA that came in late, uh, SAC 40627. I believe this was one uh, that Raphael uh, sent an email about this morning. Please comment on it. Um, visit that one. Check that one out since we did not get to that one on the list. So uh, take a look at that one. Oh, Raul, I'm sorry. Not Raphael. Raul, I'm sorry. All right. Thanks, everybody, for a great meeting, and we will see you right back here two weeks from today on September 18th to talk about grading. Have a good day. Thanks, Matt. Thanks.